Hey, this is Dominic Pace, who plays Gecko the Bounty Hunter from The Mandalorian, letting you all know you are listening to the Star Wars Stuff Podcast. Wishing everybody all the best, and may the Force be with you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Star Wars Stuff Podcast. My name is David. I'm Matt. And I'm Brooke. And this is where we talk about all things Star Wars. This past week, we got a YouTube video from Disney for the Galactic Star Cruiser opening spring 2022 at Disney World. Disney World only, not Disneyland. So where do you think the guests will park that are going to the Galactic Star Cruiser? There's going to have to be some kind of parking like out there somewhere. Maybe they'll have like an underground car park. Because I'm assuming it says you're going to, it's going to seem like you're like blasting off. So it's probably going to look like there's the parking lot and you're probably going to have some structure that's going to look like some sort of like spaceport. And then you'll get in there and they'll quote unquote blast you up to the Star Cruiser. That's my guess. Blast us up there, huh? Yeah, Yeah. that's exactly what they talk about in the YouTube video. You can actually see Oh my gosh, I didn't even see the YouTube video. I'm just a genius. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Someone get her working for <laughs> Imagineering right now. And if you're listening right now and you're like Brooke and haven't seen the video, you can go to our Facebook group and actually see the video I think that we're about to detail right here. So, yeah, I just showed you that first picture. This is going to be basically the drop-off point. You can see cars there. You drop off your luggage. It's basically going to be like a cruise. Um, I've never been on a cruise, but I guess it's kind of like – and it's and it's a hotel – it's so, a cruise that never leaves the ground. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, probably going to be to the liking of a lot of people that don't want to be out in the ocean. But so, it'll be I like mean, leaving. No, we're going into space, though. That's... Yeah, we're going on uh, an yeah. intergalactic going adventure. On a trip yeah, take that space out. Okay, shit. <laughs> yes. Um, so, like, I think like that, like when you go to like Disney World's main website and you like go like the Galactic Star Cruiser are coming to Walt Disney and blah 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 blah, and it tells you like the things you could do like with like launch pods. There's there's the atrium, which is like the the main like lobby uh, where like you can gather with passengers, but like also like cast members who are like 100 percent fully in character and costume all the time, and they have like meet and greets with characters, but they're kind of just in your world. They're not like there to meet with you. They're there to because you know, they're a part of the same world that you could also travel to the bridge and look at the ship's navigation and defense systems under the cruise like guidance like the cast members so like there's like a it's a very immersive ex- experience uh and that's not even including like the stuff you can do in your own room your own cabin with like wielding a lightsaber and like looking out of like the port window which is just like this awesome amazing like 130 screen or no i think it's 170 degree and screen or something like that yeah if those windows are true to form there those are going to be some really big screens and apparently you're going to be able to shoot the cannons off of your ship oh, and they're going to teach you how to do that because apparently there's a specific way you have to do that but yeah you're going to be it's going to be a very immersive experience and unfortunately when i went to galaxy's edge it wasn't that immersive because it was during covid so I didn't get a lot of the immersion. That, I'm looking uh, at a picture of them playing um, in the sublight lounge. They're playing like a holographic version of Sabacc. Um Oh, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. And then there's like the, the Crown of Corellia dining room, which is like this, like the main dining hall inside that one right there. Yep. That's, that's the picture I wanted to see. Cause that's what I'm talking about. Uh, they have like, it says, enjoy unforgettable meals in a setting known throughout the galaxy for first-class cuisine and intriguing conversation. Ooh. I know. It's just in it's such an inviting space and it invites me to converse with my friends among the galaxy. Yeah, one thing they talked about in the YouTube <clears throat> video is that all your meals will be included, so you don't have to pay for anything. So, oh, that's nice. It's, I mean, are we? Just I'm sure there's always the available. For, <laughs> I'm sure there's availability for upgrades all the time. Like, yeah, most likely. And like, I imagine like the idea of alcoholic beverages is going to be uh, something that we talk about, like with the the same scenario in the cantina. Are those kinds of same beverages going to be offered? Uh, we haven't seen like an official like menu that I that I know of of the 
any of the dining experiences that are within the Star Cruiser. I don't know anything about that. I'd like to, though. Yeah, I don't I, think a mini I has been released think, yet. I would think that they'd have roughly the same drinks. Hmm. I imagine they might want to use this as an opportunity to maybe introduce a few new beverages. Right. I could see that. Having roughly the same and then a couple, we'll call them exclusive ones, only at mm-hmm. the Star Cruiser. Well, in the video, they do talk about how the chefs came up with a new kind of menu. Um, yeah, they talk about that. Not, something that's not not from so. the two. So, oh. yeah. And some of this stuff, I mean, it looks totally new compared to what you can get right now at Black Spire. It's a weird looking shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Some of those shrimp from uh, Sorgan from The Mandalorian. Mm. Delish. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and they also talked about music and a show that you're going to actually have the opportunity to uh, kind of interact with. And they did mention that while boarding to get on the Star Cruiser, mm. there's potential for you to run into those performers and those performers to be interacting with you. And they brought up a scenario where you might have to smuggle some of their luggage on on the ship for them. And then you might actually see them performing. It might be the same people. That's so, cool. Yeah. Well, I and, know Disney was holding auditions. Well, I had it posted. I didn't go. But they were looking for like oh. stuff. <laughs> they were looking for like stunt people who could do like tricks and like I cannot. So I did not go. <laughs> so they were looking for like Kylos and Rays who could do like actual stunts. And they were also wow. looking for like specific like roles for like the star cruiser there was like a, a lightsaber wielder or I, I can't remember off the top of my head but there were a few wasn't that like, like the lightsaber trainer that i'm, I'm yeah I may, or may not have believed that colin auditioned for a little bit since the video i think uh he was thinking about it i don't think he actually did um but yes Fiddle sticks i know we rehearsed for a whole night <laughs> So, so yeah, Colin is very be. good with the lightsaber. Yeah, yes, that yes. was back. Uh, that was back during uh, May the fourth. Um, mm-hmm. We were down there. We we're on vacation. Colin's like, guys, I need your help. I want to make this video so I can audition to be a, a lightsaber instructor for Star Cruiser Base. And then like, he didn't what? even do it. I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we had a few beers and we did a couple of little things in his backyard and tried to <laughs> film it. And we're like, this is terrible. Let's do this again tomorrow. And then we didn't. So yeah, there will be lightsaber training, and apparently some of the walls will be interactive. I like this picture. You'll be able to block blasts from some of the hallways, mm-hmm. or maybe this is the training. I'm not sure, but yeah, you can you can see a whole lot more and listen to a whole lot more detail on that YouTube video. I want to actually get a shot like that, but like like how I want to feel what Luke felt in A New Hope <laughs> and inside the. Do you want like a like a shock vest? Yeah, like, that, like, like, like this. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Or like get me in the butter and like a leg. Yeah, I want to experience that. And of course, we all know this already, but apparently you're gonna be able to board a shuttle to go to Batu Black Spire. And it's a Black Spire shuttle. You can see the little logo on the side. Mm. And you'll be in there with a bunch of other characters. And of course, whatever story you choose, you can either choose to be on the light side or the dark side. It's supposed to line up with what you experience at Galaxy's Edge when you get on the Falcon, whatever you, uh, I guess the points will actually count on the Falcon, Smuggler's Run. Um, there's interaction with Hondo, and apparently you can either have the option to just sit out the whole thing and not participate in any of the storylines, or you can participate in maybe half of it. You get to choose when and where you get to actually interact with the whole situation, which I think is pretty cool. That is really cool. Cause some people aren't going to, they're not going to want like the full thing. There's something that they're just not into. They would be more comfortable with like a, a lesser, like, you know, I'm staying at a hotel and it's just star Wars themed, but then those people who do want the full experience can still get it. So I think that's really neat. And my honest, like if I'm going to pay that much to go to that thing and I don't want to experience those things, you're honestly you're not there for the right reasons. <laughs> It's just my thing. Okay. You're just jealous you don't have that much money to blow, Matt. I just blew it on a Jeep, so. (laughs) (laughs) 
now someone wants to buy it, so we'll see if I can get someone in to go to uh, Star Cruiser anyways. There you go. <laughs> But there were other interesting details that the roundtable talked about here. I have some screenshots, and they did talk about it. It's your story. You get to pick and choose what you want to do. You're not going to be forced in anything. Um, and you, you can just have a total, like, just viewer experience. Um, and, of course, Galaxy's Edge is going to be incorporated into the story as much as possible. And they talked about how they developed Galaxy's Edge and the Galactic Star Cruiser in tandem. So it's supposed to overlap. And they've been working on it for six years, apparently. And there's a shot of him talking about the overlapping. And, of course, they talk about how you don't have to know all the canon. You don't have to know what is currently what's on the bleeding edge, like what we talk about here on the podcast. And you can just enjoy that whole experience. And of course, the, one of the big draws is going to be one, uh, seeing one of these brand new lightsabers that actually um, extend and um, basically slide back into the blade like a real lightsaber like we've seen mm -hmm. all these years on screen. I've already had people ask me, hey, where can I buy those real lightsabers? And I'm like, not right <laughs> now. <laughs> we don't got them. <laughs> So people are already excited about them. And they're yeah, looking for them. Yeah, and like you talked about, Brooke, it fits perfectly for what you I love how said. you talk to your guests, Brooke. That was that was <laughs> quotable, if not forever, I will say it. Ah, uh, not right now. <laughs> that is clearly not how I said it to them. I probably said it. <laughs> but that's some so when I Ooh. speak to guests, what goes on in my brain and what comes uh -huh. out of my mouth are two very different things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep the magic, Brooke. That's my yeah. job. Yeah, Brooke is telling the truth because I was there at <laughs> Hollywood Studios when she was speaking to guests. So I never told you this, Brooke. Oh, sorry, little boy. I was actually there for a little while because you were interacting with a guest. The so, little girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, okay, so I actually had, up. she was the cutest little thing. Mm -hmm. She pulls up in like a AZ AT Walker themed wheelchair. Right. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, no, it was all and then Ugh. she also had like a like an actual like walker that was like the Millennium Falcon. And she was just like just wanted to play. So I had nobody around and I was like, let's play. So we were just running around playing Frozen because that's where I was that day. <laughs> that's when David Frozen. Just what there were little keychains that she was like we were playing with, and it would be like, Do you want to build a snowman? And I'm like, Yes, I want to build a snowman. And oh, so, yeah, like, yeah. we kept switching between who was Anna, who was Elsa, and then maybe I was Olaf, and then we just, you know, we played. Yeah, that, that was cool. And I like waited, I was like, Okay, let's just wait here. My family was like laughing, she's because we were like in a rush, and I was just like, Let's just wait a second. And my, my wife was like, just hurry up and go talk to her right quick so you can go to the <laughs> next ride. <laughs> and I was like, no, I can't interrupt this. This is great. This is what Brooke does. Like, I, can't, <laughs> I can't interrupt this. So, yeah, we waited there for a while. I was, like, right behind that, like, little, like, gift. Thing. Yeah, no, I yeah. don't remember how I eventually saw you if you said my name, but... I was in I was in Frozen Land. I was I was Elsa, and I was building a snowman. So, yeah, that was cool. Oh, that was, was cool really to sweet. see. Yeah. So yeah, you can uh, basically go to the bridge and get bridge training as well as well as lightsaber training, and they train you how to shoot the blasters. And I just want to see those screens. I want to see if it's anything like Rise of the Resistance. It's going to be epic, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm thinking it, it's totally going to be. And going back to the round table here, here's the big point of contention we all ha kind of had this week. Um, you talked about we also have the opportunity to, be to become characters. And we all know that you can go Disney bounding. You can kind of wear something that's Star Wars centric, but you can't wear a full blown costume. But according to the Imagineers, you will be able to wear a full costume on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Now, we all know that you cannot in Batu, because of the obvious confusion between people that aren't dressed and don't know the specifics of who is in official costume and who's actually working the park. So how is that really going to work? If I show up in my TIE pilot uniform, 
am I going to constantly be getting guests asking me for directions and where to go, what to do and wanting for me to interact with them? I mean, that seems a little bit like a conflict of interest when you think about it. It does, because the whole reason that Disney has the rule where adults can't dress up, like obviously if a little kid is dressed up, you know that that kid is not a character, but an adult could potentially look good enough. That You're saying they didn't hire little Disney boys and girls? They don't. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> um, a, an adult could look enough like a character, and if their costume's good enough, people are going to think, oh my gosh, this is a Disney character, and just however they're acting is going to reflect on disney there people are going to assume this is disney and if they're not acting great they're going to be like oh my gosh like i can't believe a disney character would do this and so Mm -hmm. that's why that rule exists basically so i am curious how that is going to go because you're right david like if you're in a full out awesome looking costume people are going to think you have to be a part of this Mm -hmm. i wonder if they're just assuming that people aren't going to do that but they know that they will because the people that are going to this kind of experience with obviously the ones that possess these costumes so um i don't know how they're going to avoid that maybe they'll make you wear like some kind of badge to say i do not work for disney like they do for like um was like the uh the halloween festival that they do at magic kingdom did they make pe- did they make people do wear those no <laughs> but i think the characters are only in specific spots they're not roaming so if you're walking around people know that you're not one of them, mm. I believe, is like any other kind of meet and greet. Where you I have first hand experience that says the exact opposite. Oh, really? So, well, that was at Magic Kingdom last year. Remember when I did that thing with with the the princesses oh, and all well, that, that stuff? Well, that was because that wasn't a Halloween party. <laughs> Normally, yeah, it's but like, like a we did, we didn't get any kind of badges or anything like that. We just went full on straight up that character. Was- yeah, but, and that was the first time Disney had ever done that, which was really shocking to people for that reason. Yeah, we were, we were wearing masks, and we were telling people we don't work for Disney. Please don't take pictures with us because we're not allowed to take pictures with people. But people don't listen, and they still Ob- yeah, obviously. shoved yeah, their yeah. kids like at people's backs and was like, mm, for sure, a picture with for sure. Yeah, there I was. I was getting shoved in the like corners. People think not thinking I was Gaston, and I was like, "Lady, I don't work for these people. Leave me alone." Yeah. So yeah, not- David. If you it, let's just let's just say that if you go wearing a full on Tie Fighter, expect that. <laughs> well, okay. and you would just that just doesn't seem right. Yeah, you yeah you think that people wouldn't be doing that. They think they'd have a better sense of mind to know that you're not. Well, not you're not just- actually working there. You're just a guest, but. They did it anyways I'm to me. So what's to Disney say that they want to do it? Is going to deal with that because they're they're going to want to avoid that. So I'm just, it'll, I'll be interested to see how it plays out and what exactly the rules are. Yeah. Maybe it'll give me more of a Comic-Con vibe than I, than I thought, because if we can all walk around a character like that, but it's like all right. Star Wars only. So it's like a Star Wars kind of con, but like it's a full immersive experience. And that's what I was kind of thinking too. I mean, it's going to be kind of like Comic-Con. If anyone's ever been to Comic-Con, if you see a cool costume, you you simply ask, can I get a picture with you? And it usually happens. Yeah. I think it's going to be more like that. I think Disney have probably solved that issue without just telling us outright what they're doing. Um, because, yeah, it's going to be a lot of confusion. A lot of people that are going to be in really great co- costumes that are visiting, not working, are going to be approached and yeah that's like brooke said i just want to see how that plays out but the interesting thing is a few of our hosts on the podcast will be working for disney and they also have costumes so what are you going to tell them when they approach you (laughs) and you're wearing your costume you can't tell them you don't work for disney because you technically do (laughs) i mean i'll just be like i don't work here at the I work for time. Disney, but I don't work she works here. down the road a little I know. bit. Just I work on the next, the next planet over. Um, yeah. I'm on my break. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm on a small vacation, little getaway. I mean, I would. It, I don't have to tell called, them I work. I it's work for Disney. Just staycation. <laughs> staycation. <laughs> mm, um, lovely. So yeah, it's gonna be a thousand dollars a night. A Got it. Let's go. <laughs> How many how many beds are in a room? How how many ways are we splitting this? Well, I think there's two full size beds, and they have like bunk beds for children. So I think you can you can sleep six technically. Okay. 
So six divided, divided two thousand. So, we're so the smaller state. people on the podcast will be in the bunks. The larger people will be in the Take that, bro. I'm sleeping with Colin. Uh, now, hold on. And we'll put uh, uh, Ray and the other one. The other one? <laughs> and then we'll put David, and David and James in the other bed. And Sam can sleep on the ground. Because <laughs> Sam's really good at sleeping on the ground. I think James could actually fit snugly in a bunk. I was just going to say... So James in a bunk, Brooke in a bunk, <laughs> and then Brooke's husband will be sleeping with me and Matt. Sick. All right. And then Ray's got a bed to herself. Wait, what? Yeah, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> Damn it. We need the measurements of these bunk beds. <laughs> Let me see if I can get some specifications on the internet. Yeah, I think all the specifications are just kind of rumored at this point. And I, I yeah. think we only actually, you know what? I think there are pictures online, but I don't think we have the exact measurements. And <laughs> we need the specs. Yeah, totally. Mm. So, yeah, I'm going to try and go um, as soon as it opens. But of course, we all ha- kind of had that theory that, well, there's probably going to be a section that the, it's not going to be open to the general public. They're going to invite like VIPs and celebrities and whatever else they want to do. to open for some time. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm going to try. Colin said he's going to try. So well, we shall see. Do some sort of cast preview. At least yeah, I, that'd be awesome too. I don't even have yeah. to necessarily stay. Just as long as I can see it. Yeah. Don't forget yeah, your tape like measure. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, take a tape measure with you. Take as many pictures as you can. <laughs> These bunks look uh, uh, very small. Holy cannoli. Yeah. Well, now we need to decide, like, who sleeps, like, just, like, straight out. Some of us curl up in balls, because even if you're taller, if you curl up in a ball, you're still going to be fine in this bed. <sighs> well, I'm old. I need a bed. I'm not going to curl up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sick. Okay, cool. And I wouldn't even mind sleeping on the floor. I can sleep on floors still, so I wouldn't even mind. If Ray bring needed a bed to herself. Bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring some Tauntaun sleeping bags. That'd work. There you go. Yeah. Well, actually, in like, this cabin I'm looking at right here, it's one like king-size bed, and then, then like the two pods that are in the wall. I'm, that's what I'm seeing. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I wonder, wonder if they'll have like, family suites. Options. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Let me look at reservation. It almost feels like every suite is a family suite. Because I think they figure that if it's going to be $1,000 a night, mm-hmm. you're not going to get a lot of singles show up. It's going to be like a group thing. Well, or, you can get, or maybe you can get like multiple rooms that are like connected, you know? Yeah. yeah. Have the sliding door like open up and... Potentially, yeah. potentially. I did not design it though. Oh, here's another like picture of like this one. It looks like a concept design with like a giant bed. Like that one's huge. Just make the whole floor a bed and then you can sleep anywhere. Oh, wow, bro. You just came up with a really good oh. fuzzy carpeting. Here we come. That's all I need. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely. I think going to be different versions of different uh, rooms that you can stay in, but that's as far as I know. Yeah, <laughs> you, you would assume that they're going to have different room One options. One can only expect, but yeah. So, uh, do we want to talk about the next topic? Uh, I, I guess. I mean. I just think to. I just think that uh, we can move on. We've talked about this quite a bit. I got nothing left to say on it, and I'm ready to talk about some Bad Batch. All right, Bad Batch. War Mantle. Boom. War Mantle. <laughs> okay. Bro, can you read that? <laughs> what can I read? What to say? Where? On the bottom, the picture here. I literally don't see anything, Matt. Okay. After receiving a mysterious distress call, the Bad Batch tracks it to a secret oh, facility. Oh, I was like, War I was Mantle. Like, I was looking like under that. I was like, I don't see anything. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, that specific. name, War Mantle. 
Yeah, that Namor mantle is a callback to Rogue One when uh-huh. uh, Jen Erso starts reading all the project names. War Mantle, Cluster Prism, Scar Saber, or Black Saber, and then Stardust. So, yeah. So, I guess we now officially know that War Mantle was the code name for replacing clones with regs, in a sense. So, yeah, it's uh, spoilers for Bad Batch. So, yeah, the, the episode starts off with one of the clones running away from the Empire. And it seems that we got one of the big explanations for Stormtroopers over clones here. Because it seems like some of the clones have actually have morals and can defect. And that's more of a reason for the Empire to get rid of the clones and replace them with standard recruits that can't really shoot that well. So, With funny looking helmets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So on our Instagram, if you follow us there, Colin posted this picture of the video game Republic Commando, I believe, and one of the uh, head troopers there that we see in this episode. And I thought that was a cool nod. But the even cooler nod was this to Ralph McQuarrie's original drawings of Stormtroopers. And it looks like we get the version 1.0 is the Alpha Stormtroopers. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's uh, pretty much the same, the same helmet design, same visor. And it's they almost look, like every time something, something like this rolls around. Like- yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> like I, I don't know. I think I don't. I don't know if that front part is like down lower. Just like something, they look angrier. Like their they faces like, more. They look like the regular storm TK stormtroopers with like German white helmets on top of their head. <laughs> and yeah, the, the con it's it's very similar to the and you definitely recognize since the concept art. And I love the one on the the second from the left and the top. That's my favorite. But um. I was I was I was way more excited and I was texting Colin as I was watching it because both Colin and I played Republic Commando and I love command commandos all the time. Um and like the, it they which was no longer canon and then um but like the name Scorch which is RC1262 uh, from Republic Commando which is one being referenced here in the picture was recanonized a minor role actually in like season uh, three of the Clone Wars, uh, which is in the mist, which is when they talked when they had another commando for the first time on the Clone Wars, which is another the first reference they had Republic Commandos, which is why it's being referenced again, because um, uh, Favreau was like, yeah, I'm gonna reference this because I already did it once, I'll do it again, and he just is given commandos the recognition that they deserve, and this is also like the first time again that we're seeing the same kind of weapon you, that Gregor uses. Um, which is the same design that was originally meant for uh, commandos. So I'm really excited to see that. Yeah, I love it when they bring back stuff that was decanonized and recanonized mm-hmm. and was no was never canon. But of course, us as fans kind of experienced it. We kind of mm-hmm. fell in love with it. They bring it back. I love yeah, that. and um, we, me and Colin watched A New Hope as you know, David, yesterday. And I, I noticed a couple of references after watching A New Hope. Um, and I went to back to confirm them. Um, so there's uh, music from the episode, uh, from the Death Star scene mm-hmm. at the end of the movie that was in that was referenced in Bad Batch. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they shared the, the thermal exhaust port that Bad Batch used in the escape hatch. Uh, that yep. was a reference back to Luke Skywalker's proton torpedoes launched into the, the thermal exhaust port, which chained the reaction to the destruction of this Death Star. Yeah, the musical oh. cues were just great. <laughs> it, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of a shock and a jolt when I hear those familiar tones that we've heard from the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. And it it's it's all it almost takes me out of it in a way, but then it's like no no no, this is Star Wars. We're getting we're leading up to the original trilogy, so this this is this is proper. This should happen. So there was this other picture too of another commando, and I believe this is was was the uh, commando you were talking about. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're leading right up to the original trilogy here. 
We should also mention mention that Dario is a new planet, a new location that we've not seen before. Yeah, oh, I don't remember. I, no, it's it's a new location, never mentioned before in canon, and I was just like loving the landscapes. Honestly, man, it's getting some rocky vibes. Yeah, oh, well, I wonder who that planet is named after. Daro, D A R O. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, Daro. Yeah, I think it's. And they also have the the massifs. Uh, those dogs that we see in the Mandalorian. And were they exactly the Massives, or were they a different breed? Or... Yeah, the, it's the same. The same. Uh, cause they looked a little different <laughs> to me. Like well, their the snouts were more like that, that was blunt. The, the, the same ones that Din Djarin met on the Mandalorian, and they were ones that were seen in Attack of the Clones and Clone Wars. Same breed okay. from the Tusken Raiders. Okay. And that ending that ending i mean it's well first of all we don't see what happens to the prime minister the Kaminoan prime minister yeah that's true so they kind of leave that kind of open-ended usually we hear like blaster fire or something when someone gets executed but the door shut i was waiting for the blaster fire too i was waiting for it didn't yeah. hear it yeah and the calmness of their voice also it's so like soothing, it should be like GPS or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I buy that? Where's the Camino and the Camino and GPS? Oh man, so, I'll take that. I also get nervous that they're trying to kill me. Right, because, like they'll be so subtle, but they're like turn left. Huh? It's like, like a life. There's only a right situation. turn here, and they'll be like turn left. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> There's only a right turn. Yeah, have them like on OnStar or something, and they're like so super calm. So like a life threatening situation. Would you like me to dial nine one one now? Yikes! Never mind. I take that back. Don't want it. Never mind. <laughs> return, return, return. <laughs> well, so yeah, the very end. It's it, it was it was a pretty cool action sequence, and I was thinking while watching it, I was thinking, is this the moment? Is this the moment we're gonna lose someone from the bad batch? Because we all kind of think that. It's going to have a Rogue One type of ending where kind of everyone either dies, gets captured, or goes yeah. into kind of self-exile, kind of like Yoda. But uh, we didn't really see that, but we did see Hunter get caught. And the last scene we Wait, see is, is him in a cell facing off with... Um, Crosshair. Yeah, Crosshair. Yeah, yeah, it's about, yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. time. How many episodes yeah. has it been since they finally like met up? Uh, I don't know. I couldn't it's tell been a while. Time. But I've been, enjoying, I've been enjoying all the episodes. I, I never went into the Bad Batch thinking that I'm going to get some like profound information every single episode. I mean, I've just mm -hmm. been watching it with zero expectation and I've enjoyed it. I think I've enjoyed it more than most people. So. I've been like I've I've liked it. I don't like dislike it, but I've started to get a little bored with it. This episode finally kind of picked up for me, and I was like, okay, we're finally starting to like see something. But just it feels like a lot of kind of filler episodes, and like I said, not that I'm not kind of like enjoying it. It's Star Wars. I like it, but I think I was expecting a little more for me personally. I was fully aware and ready for filler episodes, just like we saw with Clone Wars. There. Uh quite a few episodes I can go without because they're just like, uh, but um, so I was fully prepared for Bad Batch to have the same kinds of fill episodes and we'd get information like every one to three episodes. But um, the last episode was pretty, pretty in terms of like information that was given out and like the amount that we, of information we got to put the plot moving forward, this was one of the largest ones mm -hmm. uh, on this half of the seasons. And there was there was like the couple in the very beginning that I was like, oh my god, oh my god. But then I got my oh okay, it, this is it pretty like, good. We started off and then it went. Yeah, yeah. No. But now that like we have like what like two more, one more episode, two more episodes, two more episodes left. Two more episodes, okay. right? So obviously they have to. Uh, pick it up now, but if these so, last two episodes don't knock my socks off, I'm gonna be very upset. Make sure you're wearing socks at the beginning, okay? <laughs> I have to wear socks. Can I keep this apartment so cold? 
Colin likes it cold, you know it, and which is a stupid reason why he moved to Florida. But whatever. <laughs> okay. He's like, I hate being hot. Let's move to Florida. I was like, okay. Uh, he's got to be the protector of the realm of the Skyliner. The Skyliner. Duh. The Skyliner. So what do you think oh. is going to happen in the, these next two episodes, Brooke? What would oh, blow your socks true. off? I heard a theory mm-hmm. that I kind of dig, and it's that Crosshair is actually, he has snapped out of his, we'll call it a trance, because his head exploded, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. On the side where I think the chip oh, is. Burned. <laughs> burned, whatever, you know. He has been scarred. Um, and so the fact cool. that he's just kind of been playing along for a bit, and that he's actually going to try to like help the bad batch because this is yeah. so like the next episode that'd be really cool in my opinion if he's like hey hunter like i'm actually i'm on your side like let's let's fix this i don't know so that'd be kind of cool otherwise i just i don't know i feel like the whole series has just kind of been like i haven't really known what to expect so i'm not even 100 sure what to expect in the finale i have no idea Obviously, I'd like to know, like, what happens to the Bad Batch. Are we going to get a, a Rogue One situation where they all die? Because, like, you would think with a group like this, we would have heard about them doing something. Yeah, know? the composer Kevin Kiner said that when he composed some of this music, he cried. Oh, man. So that, I think that kind of leads oh, us to what believe. What if a huge, what if a big group of clones, like, like a, it was Gregor, right, in this episode? Yeah. 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 What if they yep. all come together and they have like one last stand to try to fight the now empire? And of course they're all going to die, but like that would kind of be that would be neat. I've been disappointed with the level uh or lack thereof level of Rex in this uh first season. Um I'm a little disappointed with that. I wonder I my theory um Crosshair's going to die. Uh, I think so too. If I had to pick one of them, because I think I think that that Crosshair is going to like try. He's going to pretend. He's not going to switch back over. He's going to he's going to go out fighting. No, he's just going to come up with the idea of like maybe like, hey, I'm on your side, you know, and then you know, cross him again because it's Crosshair. Oh, a double so, Crosshair. Yeah, double Crosshair. It's like a hashtag almost. <laughs> I guess. But yeah, Crosshair's gonna die. Um, I don't know, uh, someone else is gonna die. Death. It's gonna be death. That's my prediction. That's all I got. <laughs> also, Omega. We still don't really. I still. Mm, all right. I don't hate Omega, but I still think she's kind of pointless. <laughs> like she hasn't really done anything, and I still don't understand how she's like a perfect replica of Django Fett. But blonde. Right and female. So obviously she's not and female. a perfect replica. Mm. So I'm like, I don't understand. I don't get it. Well, <laughs> yeah. obviously she's defective. I don't. Way, get but, uh, well, if she was defective, I don't think they would be hunting her so badly. They wouldn't want her so bad. I don't know what to tell you. That I don't know. Yeah, I'd like to see a little bit of a conclusion as to like what the heck with Omega. Doubt you're gonna get it, but okay. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, I'd rather, f- rather make you wait a year. Yeah, I have a feeling that there might be a cliffhanger. We might get a season two. <laughs> it's possible. So, yeah. Yep, they're probably gonna do it. I'm gonna be upset. It's gonna mess up my whole year. At least I got football coming here soon, so I can just focus on that for like the next Hey, we're coming months. into my favorite time of the year. Like that end, those last few months, all the holidays, the fall. It'll yeah. get me through, I guess. Yeah. And then, of course, Visions. That's coming to Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. That'll give us a lot to, to talk about. And then the lead up to Boba Fett, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a whole bunch of rumors coming oh. out. <laughs> Even more than what we're getting mm-hmm. now, which is a lot. And yeah, if on our Patreon, you can listen to Colin and I and whoever else wants to join to talk about rumors for the upcoming Obi-Wan series, Obi-Wan. Book of Boba Fett, because there's a lot of stuff that's floating around and it's pretty good. It's Gotta be exciting. talked about. Gotta talk about it, all right? 
Yeah, we are. All right. On Patreon. On Patreon. <laughs> I hear only the cool kids join Patreon. So yeah, that's that, what I've heard what too. You will. Yeah, my dad's on it. I think. Oh shoot! I don't know if he supports me like that, but I think. But yeah, <laughs> if he doesn't, Dad, get on Patreon. All right. Do you even love your say. son? So yeah, right there. Yeah. There you go. There's our Patreon. You can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all of the grams, all the all the things. You know. Mm-hmm. All the, yeah. All the interwebs. So yeah, I will be posting. <laughs> maybe the most stuff that I think I've ever posted on Patreon this week uh, due to the fact that something kind of unfortunate happened, which uh, I was supposed to meet Ian uh, McGregor and Hayden Christensen this weekend. And this is supposed to be the podcast where I talk about, I was supposed to talk about having the time of my life, chatting it up with Ewan, asking Hayden about his love life. It didn't happen. So yeah. Hayden has a love life. Yeah, apparently there are some uh, rumors here. I, I don't mean to go into rogue rumors, but uh, apparently someone was talking about how Natalie Portman and Hayden dated for a little while. Really? Yeah. How interesting. So I was just going to ask him straight up. Uh, right when he put his arm over my Star shoulder. Podcast. Yeah. Nah, facts only. Because there is a picture out there that shows oh, them kind man. of... Uh, Close together on set. I don't know. They were in love. Yeah. yeah, it was just speculation. Like but yeah, sports. Celebrity Fan Fest got canceled. Wah, no one wah. went to it. So, so. sad. So yeah. be safe out there, everybody. Don't so be like hopefully, me. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> Star Wars Celebration is still on in May, and we get to see Hayden and you in there. Have them, yeah, on the stage at their. Panel. Or maybe we'll see you, fun listener slash viewer. Oh. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I did it. So, yeah, they canceled, but for some reason, Giancarlo Esposito keeps on booking more cons. So he will be here in October. <laughs> Sick. All right. At All Big right. Texas Comic Con in San Antonio. So mm. he was at Comic Palooza where I did go to in Houston. I didn't get his autograph, didn't get a photo op with him. So definitely I will this time. I was trying to behave myself and yeah, get that not, photo out. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. I, to me, he's one of the best living actors out there, I think. Mm-hmm. And he's so welcoming, so game to do anything. I just saw a picture of someone. He, he was at a con this last weekend where he was choking out a baby Yoda in a picture <gasps> with a guy. <laughs> dressed as Din Djarin. Oh it was kind of funny. He had like a real serious face. Yeah, so yeah, he's he's super cool. And that panel I attended, he spoke the most, I think. And he was just so outgoing. Got a lot very, to say. Yeah, he he said a whole lot and it was it was pretty cool to and it seems like he's one of those people I always talk about on the podcast that we want in Star Wars that wants to attend the cons, that's a fan of Star Wars and we love just them. kind of knows the fandom and kind of gets it like all of us hardcore fans do. So, yeah, hopefully it happens in October. But uh, there are some spikes in the country with COVID 2.0. Yeah, there are. Florida is definitely really bad. If you're planning on coming, just definitely be safe. Disney wear just had to wear a helmet. Yeah, I don't, know if that's gonna, I don't know if it's gonna. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I picture just like a bike helmet. Like, <laughs> no. what's, that, what's that gonna do? Uh, TK armor, uh, phase two has really good, uh, it can block out toxins, mm-hmm. yeah, but not smoke, not phase one. <laughs> phase ones are garbage, don't get a phase one. Yeah, yeah, For yeah sure. they do a better vision, to, though, slightly better vision, I think. Disney had to semi reinstate a mass mandate so it's just for indoors so like all the transportation it was always that way but now any indoors vaccinated or not you gotta have a mask on what if you're like what about eating in like the starlight diner well like obviously like like uh restaurants it's gonna be the same you know if you're up and about mask on but when you're at your table obviously you can't eat so I, can't, I can't wander through like t-rex anymore with the mask off nope okay Okay. Can't I can't just walk through World of Lego. Nope. No mask. All right. Okay. I mean, 
people are really I guess that's a good s- thing. That's a good thing. But I mean, just to get it under control, because you know everybody's coming here. So Florida. Don't even get Florida's me started on it. Got some spikes. So if you're planning on coming to Florida, just be very, very safe, especially if you're unvaccinated. Or just don't. The traffic's terrible. You don't want to go. It's really <laughs> also, bad. yeah, it's it's crowded here. But <laughs> there's already too many people in that city. That uh, really. I've, there are. How can there be so many people in such a small it's, amount of space? That was just such a culture shock to me. Just like how long it takes me to get to such a short distance. Like I would put it in my GPS. How many like, miles away do you work? Like from Disney? Yeah, your your apartment is oh. like like six miles. Maybe you can see Disney from your apartment. I she can, can see. see I can Kingdoms. see slash here the Magic Kingdom fireworks. I oh, am. Wow. We are behind like Magic Kingdom. And how it long does it take me, you? To get to Magic Kingdom, it would take me less than 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Probably five, but I haven't timed it. Now, to get, like, when I drive to work, it probably takes me, with bad traffic, 20. But honestly, the other day, I hit really good traffic and made it in 10 minutes. So, honestly, it depends. But oh, most of my weird. driving is Disney property. Like, that's how close I am. That's cool, I guess. Don't give too much information about where you live. Okay. You, you can't find me. Like, you can't find me. There's so there many people so, living there. There's so many directions that you would have to go. Like, good luck trying to find me. Yeah, Orlando is there's I there's not a single straight road in that city, I think. They're all no. slightly like curving around like some kind of body yeah. of water or like an Everglade or oh my gosh, yeah. a swamp where there may or may not be it's alligators. Also, Florida just is a swamp. It just is. Jeez. And then or and, and then Disney's like Let's build there. Let's build there. Yeah, let's go there. I don't think, I don't think what? Walt was planning. He was like, "Oh, it's warm there," and I'm like, what? "Yeah, it's like your resort. Hot. Your your Magic Kingdom flooded last week because it's too much rain, Mister Disney. What you oh, doing?" Oh yeah. So fun fact: to Tomorrowland and Magic Kingdom, I have never seen something flood so bad in my life. Like ankles deep, ankles mm. deep in water, and it's been a few years, and it's still happening. I wonder how much damage that costs. That caused, not caused. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, roughly everything is built up, so I don't know. Yeah, that day I met you, Brooke. But you got You can't think that, like, like I don't know, like maybe the lobby of like um, Space Mountain may have flooded because it was fantasy, or and then it was Tomorrowland, right? That flooded. Yeah, but it's a certain section of it, like over by. Like the people like mover, people mover carousel of progress. I don't really know about the oh, other carousel area. Of pro- progress gets flooded. That thing's shutting oh. down. <laughs> oh, I'd be so sad. But start the but that is that is pretty elevated. About like it's like I think it's like eight feet up. Yeah, with that ramp. But fun, like fun uh, fact, Buzz Lightyear, that would get flooded. Fun fact: the entire Magic Kingdom is built up. It is. So we all know that there are tunnels beneath it, right? We all knew that. Well, in Florida, it's all swampy. You can't, you don't have basements. <clears throat> so te- so think of it like one story, two story. The tunnels are literally ground level and they built the Magic Kingdom up. So like say on the second floor. So the tunnels really aren't under. The second floor freaking flooded. Yeah. Way to go, yeah. Disney. So your fun fact for the day. Gosh darn it. Yeah, that day that I did meet you over there at Hollywood Studios, Brooke, uh, it rained a whole lot at night mm. Getting as it was getting darker. And I was at Galaxy's Edge, and I was ankle deep in water at Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> you got to love it. But it was fun. I love that. I have such great memories of being a kid. And uh, I have really one specific memory going on a, on a zoo trip to the San Antonio Zoo when I was in elementary school. and Indeed. Yeah, um, it was all the kids. It was hard. I don't think it was barely any parents showed up, uh, but they they bust us to a park to to eat. I believe our breakfast. I don't know. It was weird, um, but we all had like packed food to eat afterwards, and I guess it was going to be like our dinner or something. I don't know. But anyways, it rained like crazy. It just was like a downpour, and I think we were the furthest away from the entrance, so we all had to make. Our way back with our teachers, we were all soaking wet, and we were going to meet up somewhere. It was like under like a series of overpasses, I guess, because we parked underneath somewhere, and we were waiting for our food to eat. I don't think we had eaten since the morning, and apparently one of the 
one of the kids' uh, parents was in charge of the food, and she just drove back home, which is like a 45-minute drive. <laughs> So we waited there for like an hour and a half waiting for food. And that and this was before cell phones. I would have been like, order pizza. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was the entire school, though, Matt. And the entire school was maybe... Order a lot of pizza. 300, 350 kids. How do you fit the m- amount of food for 350 kids in your in your car and then forget about it and drive home? I think she was a bus driver and she had a bus full of food. How do you forget a bus full of food? She drove it back. She drove it back. She figured we were all just driving back home. Oh, so she didn't she turn thought... around and like, think they might. Ah, they might. Like they didn't this. communicate with her that yeah, we're gonna stay in San Antonio in the city and we're just gonna eat there and then drive oh, because the weather was crazy. Thought... Yeah, <laughs> dude, get out of here. We're podcasting, man. You can't be in this. This is for official podcasters only, and you were kicked out like an hour ago. Yeah, he decided to go to Galaxy's Edge, so he's uh. He's out. He's grounded. Grounded, Mister. That was Mister Colin Weaver showing up on our YouTube video. If you for you listeners, um, he, he just wanted to feature himself for a second. Uh, but yeah, David, that must have been a really terrible like what hour? Hour? Yeah, it was horrible. We were all hungry, but the rain experience was cool though. All that rain. Well, the rain is really chaos. popular in Orlando for Actually, some reason. I- get excited when it rains at Disney because I know that there are just people who they don't like the rain and they leave. Yeah. Or like they'll a- just keep inside your store. <laughs> so yeah, joining us right now is Colin Weaver, our special Galaxy's Edge. Hello. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I actually just got back and not to brag or anything, but I did Star Tours 10 times. And I did Smuggler's Run 7 times. How many different scenarios did you do? Um... I did crate three times. Um, uh, I did Hoth once. I did Geonos. Uh, I did I did Geonosis once. Tatooine once. Um, I went to Batu at the end once. I did Coruscant. That was a lot of fun. Um, Kashyyyk. Um, and do the and, oven. And, and no, it's not on there. No, you don't. Does it fly by at the end or something? Yeah, but no. What planet is that that you fly by at the end when you're getting shot by Boa Jango? You mean, or Bo- is about no, Boa? Yeah, that's Geonosis. And is that Geonosis and slave yeah. the slave one? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, don't you mean Boba Fett starship? Oh, Oop. don't start. Oop. Don't start. Oop. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I uh, um, my experience was a lot of fun today, actually. Uh, I was the first one in, uh, which Sam Boltice would be very proud of me. But um, uh, I was the first one in the park, and I was the first one in Smugglers. And uh, uh, I wish I could shake your hand, sir. (laughs) And uh, and it was funny because of every time I like hopped on the ride again, it was the same cast members. So they kept seeing me, and they were like, "They were like, oh, it's it's you again." Don't you have anywhere else you want to go? And I was like, no, I'm 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 just in the Star Wars mood, and and I uh, and, and I just I just kept doing it, and uh, and then I did try something new today, um, which was over at Ronto Roasters. I did have their Ronto wrap, but it was with you. Never had the Ronto wrap? No, no, no. I have, but I haven't had the breakfast version that has oh, the egg in it. Breakfast? Yeah, how was that? How was that? Yeah, it was, it was really good. It was really. Look at good. you branching out. You never get. Never I get know. Anything new. I know. So, this guy does not like to be worldly when it comes to eating food. Neither does, not, neither does that, Sam Boltice. That, that okay. First off, that is not true. Okay. Mm-hmm. You eat the same thing. You eat the same day. thing because every ch- chicken and broccoli. That is for my diet chicken for the wedding. I'm doing that for eggs. you, baby. I'm doing uh-huh. that for you. Don't, oh, okay. don't, don't bring me into this. You're a creature. I of have habit, not asked. You, even before we were engaged, that was your routine. Yeah, and guess what? I was in good shape. And, Sue me. Uh, I still am. I'm getting back. Give me some C four. Yeah. Oh yeah, protein shake that I will leave in my car until it smells terrible for like three days. Ah, yes. I don't do that, and that was for one day, and it was because of that was I, disgusting. I had man. it in the morning, and then <laughs> oh, it's okay. or- the Orlando heat killed it, didn't it? Nuked yeah, it. yeah, it was one day. But anyways, getting back to Star Wars stuff. Um, oh uh, right, Star Wars stuff. Not yeah, we uh and uh and and then I also went to Launch Bay. Uh, which they opened up more, which was pretty cool. 
um, because I've never oh, really? seen the actual uh, that uh, the the giant mural that they did at Star Wars Celebration 2019 um, is over at Launch Bay. It's the smaller version, but it's still like the same length with Pierce Brosnan as a thrown. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. It, it's still glorious and and in the entire day to day when I was walking around and I saw Arabesh, I would just think of Brooke because I was like Brooke would exactly know like of what all this stuff was saying. So yeah, so for for our listeners here, I got real bored. And so <laughs> really I bored. have been teaching myself I just saw you write something down. Arabesh. Yeah. yeah. So nice. I literally got myself A through Z. I know it. I can read it. I walk around Galaxy's Edge and literally get really excited because I can read the signs. There are um, a few letters I haven't gotten to. They have like uh, like combined letters. Like I know the double O is one. I think there's a CH. So there's a few of those letters that I have not yet gotten to. But it's pretty cool. It's a fun skill. Highly recommend. Yeah, yeah I, uh, um, I actually quizzed her because of th- – there's the – there's the Disney parks like play app thing um, where it actually has like the arabesque scanner. So when you're walking around galaxy's edge, you can scan it. And then I would scan it and I'm like, all right, tell me what that means. And she would just read it and she would know it. And I was like, all right, well, there you go. How long does it take you to like transcribe a message, Brooke? I mean, I like keep practicing. Like I literally like, if I like, I have a little notepad here that says home is where the haunt is like from haunted mansion. And I Mm -hmm. just like translated it. Oh, right, the notepad um, that you broke off. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it takes me, like, a couple seconds because it's a new language, basically, all new symbols. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, I'm getting better. Like, I'm starting to get faster. But it's going to take me a couple seconds to, like, m- read it all. How many all right. How many symbols are there in the Airbash uh, alphabet? Well, I mean, like I said, they have, a, they have A to Z. And then they also have a few extra letters mm-hmm. that I have not yet gotten to. Are they like three extra ones or they there's there's quite a there's quite a few C-H-C-K. A few. you can look it up like i just looked at i just looked it up and found a chart mm. and there's also the numbers and punctuation which i have not yet gotten to the numbers you can read them like you can obviously tell what the numbers are but i haven't like gotten to where i could write them yet yeah so i took this picture over lunch bay and we're going to see if brooke can guess what that says no we didn't see that <clears throat> <laughs> i know sorry Down. There you go. Oh, this one comes with articulations and hot. Eric Besh. Yeah. So, um, so when she's trying to figure that out, um, I, I am, I'm excited about the new Star Wars hotel. I'm not sure if you guys have talked about that yet, but oh, that, we definitely talked about uh, that for quite okay. a bit. So really it's it, it, it's going to be so immersive, and I guarantee David, you know, already talked about it. But I just, I can't imagine. I, I, it's going to be weird if like our like our co-host like ray ray coming in being you know marvelous and like more screen accurate and then you have you know the you know the disney ray that shows up like and people are going to pay attention to the to our friend ray ray because she looks more like ray um so (laughs) i am just i'm i'm nervous because that's a lot of like i mean it's it's great but this terrifying at the same time because you know the 501st is going to have really really good costumes mm-hmm. like going there yeah so, me and david were hoping for more of uh, a comic-con aspect vibe going on where people were like more respectful about the costumes and like would ask to take pictures and they would yeah. they would maybe maybe make them wear some sort of badge saying that they're not with uh disney kind of like they do over at magic kingdom or that's something they might do or they'll have some kind of obvious uh, space. What Brooke was saying, where the, where you can meet the actual like Disney representative characters, and the rest of them wandering are not Disney yeah. affiliated. Yeah, that would be a good system if they just hand out lanyards to like way like, like there's like a little sticker, but like you are not part of the Star. Wars. Or they'll they'll right. have them in your room. Well, maybe. I mean, stickers would probably fall off. It'd probably be better if they had like lanyards that are like yeah, they, they can just, yeah, they can just pass them out like. Yeah, you're way too screen accurate, man. You're you're, you're, you're tie fighter with lanyard. Yeah. You're not Disney, but I can take a picture with you, right? <laughs> that's because, how that, that's how that should go. Well, I, well, I, I'm yeah. I mean, because if you know that people are just gonna have very, very screen accurate, and, and I, I mean, so. and 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 over the years, Disney has updated their costumes for Star Wars. Like at first, like 
Like Chew, Chewy was iffy. He's a lot better than than what he used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and and I'm just afraid that like you know someone's gonna do like a really really good Ahsoka, wink wink, Brooke, um, will end up showing up there and it's going to be very you know like oh my gosh like it's ahsoka tano and and disney doesn't have the version of ahsoka yet and then ray walks in the room um people are going to be they more fight of, well <laughs> yeah and then that will be like, canon. well but, we don't know who's stronger here so we got to fight right well yeah so i'm i'm just curious on how the whole thing's going to work anybody but ahsoka is going to win in that fight Get Ooh. Get there's no way Ooh. but does brooke as ahsoka win the fight uh i or, still need to or does the her. disney cast member <laughs> let's pop off i don't know <laughs> maybe she's like i was trained in the jedi arts of disney <laughs> it's hard to say it but, is uh i don't know, but what, yeah, to, so I don't know what to think here i'm, I'm super gonna excited money on you bro yeah oh thanks i appreciate that yeah so uh yeah you got you got, pra- you got a master right next to you who's probably teaching you too much so I am super excited and ter- terrified at the same time, but you know that David and I will be there at midnight, getting ready to to actually go and buy a room for for for. We're gonna have to split that a couple different ways. Yeah, uh, yeah, muted. That's gonna that. be the most immersive Star Wars experience. Yeah, so what I think happened? me, you, and David are going to be spooning in one bed, and then James <laughs> and Brooke are going in the little pause in the wall. Sam's lying on the ground. I don't know. Something's going on over there, but we're making strategies over here. And Colin, because you can't speak, we're just going to put you on the floor, and then me and David can rock the bed. So Colin, <laughs> and Colin, Sam on the floor, James and Brooke in the pod. Where's Ray going? We can just uh, put her on the foot of the bed like the <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure we could find something i think i'd probably just take a sleeping bag and take a sleeping bag and just mm-hmm. because the floor is a whole lot bigger than one of those beds and then I, i'd have to be sleeping with someone i don't want to punch someone in the face accidentally at night while i'm sleeping wow is that a thing that you do you yeah do that? <laughs> I'll, yeah i'll have dreams where i'm like running or Send like my condolences to your wife <laughs> yeah she'll she'll be like i got this new bruise and it's like Ugh, it wasn't me you. yeah so Yikes. yeah, yeah, I have very vivid dreams. And yeah, all I have is a cat that likes to bug me in my sleep. Yeah, I think but, we heard the cat earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I locked her outside of the room today and she didn't like that. She was trying to get through. Her paw was sticking underneath my door at one point, and I was like, yeah. You can you cannot come in here. You cannot come in here. But she yeah. she's wanted to come in. And we but, were talking uh, about this earlier with uh D twenty three happening. It's sold out, it's gonna happen November nineteenth through the twenty first. That this year at Walt, yeah, Walt Disney Damn. World. That's, that's um, so that's happening. We're gonna get some more information then for Disney Plus, of course, and of course, there's gonna be celebrities unless there's a huge spike or something. So, right, yeah, that's that's gonna happen. Which I've always wanted to attend, but it sells out super quick now, and it usually happens in that's California, but exclusive. this year it's gonna be. It, at Walt Disney World in Florida, of course. So uh, there's that. Yeah, this which which spike is higher, Orlando or California? I think California. Yeah, I think California has more restrictions and they're way more cautious. So like so, we'll just have it at our other destination. Yeah. What happens if they had to hold that internationally? Would they hold D twenty three internationally? I don't think so. If if they did it internationally, it'd be like at uh, like, not, Europe, not like Disney. Shanghai, Disney. like Europe. Well, I mean, there's a Disney, Paris. there's a Disneyland in Tokyo, I believe, right? Yeah, there's one in Tokyo, there's Tokyo and Paris. So, yeah, those are two spots right there. But of course, this last D23 that happened, we got the big announcement of the Obi Wan Kenobi show that we all speculated on and have all been wanting. So, there's potential for some <coughs> huge news and. It's you kind of surprising. Like yeah, it's kind of surprising that it's happening at Walt Disney World. So I don't know if Colin could speak to any details on D23. But I think he might still be having technical difficulties. I can't see him right now though, so Yeah. So they're muted for some reason, but that's fun. 
Well, um, I don't know if they have anything else to say, but I'm pretty much wrapped up in, for, in terms of information about all the topics we talked about today. I know we uh, mentioned uh, social media. Um, we have a lot of stuff coming up for Patreon, as we said before. Um, lots of potential stuff in the future. So, yeah, I got one more thing to talk about. Um, okay. Cool, cool. We can talk. We can talk. Finally, hey, yeah, finally, we, we got an interview on at a premiere. Uh, with Joel Edgerton, who I am super hyped that he's coming back to Star Wars, coming back to Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh, right. So he's going to play Uncle Owen, and of course, now all these years have passed since he was in the prequels in the early two thousands, twenty years ago. Um, Did you want to talk about Sam Hargrave and Book of Boba Fett? Um, we can, but I wanted to talk about this first. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know Joel Edgerton's related. coming back. Yeah, he's he's been an acclaimed director now he's been a pretty good actor um so he's reprising the role as uncle owen and of course we have that whole conversation that he has at the uh, dinner table with luke drinking the blue milk for the first time in a new hope mm -hmm. talking about how uh, not to go on some type of uh trying to remember exactly what the phrasing was um but he called he called ben Ken or obi-wan kenobi that wasn't such a crazy old man and he talked about some kind of uh, wild uh, idea. Ex I forgot exactly what the line was, but yeah, I watched it, it, it tells movie. us that he has a history that Owen Lars has a history with Obi-Wan Kenobi. So maybe, right. maybe, it. yeah, maybe Joel Edgerton has a, a lot bigger role than what we initially thought. But like I said, he did an interview and these are his words here. I'm unable to discuss the series and potentially totally as in the dark as you are. We are all, or we all know the universe of Star Wars is on serious lockdown. Part of the reason for that is that people don't want the stories to be spoiled before they come out. The great thing about Star Wars fans are they are creators of the Star Wars universes. And I think that whoever's creating these things are creating them with the fans in mind, knowing that they hold the keys to that universe. To deviate too far from what you might expect could be death by lightsaber. And yet, to not introduce surprises with that mix is death to creativity. So, I think he totally wow. gets it. He, I think he's totally on board. And I can't wait to see his his reprisal of Owen Lars. So, And I like that he like is on lockdown for like the right reasons. He's like, I'm not, I don't know any information, even if I did. I wouldn't say because I don't want to like ruin what potential stories there are lie in the future. And I want to ruin it for you or any other one else that wants to be immersed in the experience, which I totally am on board with. I don't like when not to name names, but like when people like Tom Holland, like accidentally spill stuff about like specific plot points. And like, I know people do it by accident. There's other people that do it blatantly without regard. And that is not something that we see very often in the Star Wars universe because they are so tight-lipped about what's going on in the universe, what has happened, what has already been filmed and is going to be like debuted. They're very quiet about that stuff. Um, and when like potential like I don't know scripts go missing in people's houses that they sold or something like that, that stuff gets wrapped up tight, quick, like mm -hmm. like FBI, like you know, like. Secret Service, like hop in there real quick. The Disney Service, Secret Service. What do you want to call? Them? Yeah, <laughs> and I think that was a totally great statement that that Joel Edgerton gave. I think it's Disney approved. I mean, he didn't really give away anything. Didn't didn't really say anything specifically. I mean, he, it was just predicated to, I think, what we all kind of think and what we all kind of know. Yeah, and then he just kind of reiterated pretty much everything. So. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, and what you uh, mentioned earlier about Sam Hargrave. Yeah, um, I thought we were talking about something else earlier, but I got on the same page. With <laughs> yeah, we were talking about potential things to talk about. So yeah, he's potentially apparently th there's a rumor out there that he directed an episode for uh, the Book of Boba Fett, and he which was is also... interesting. It's interesting that he yeah. would go from his normal role of stunt work over to directing. I know he has experience in directing, like he. He worked with Extraction with with uh, Chris Hemsworth in 2020 right. with Netflix, right. and now he's recorded at least one episode of Book of Boba Fett. Um, 
and knowing his experience, I can only imagine how fast paced and or extravagant that episode that he directed may or may not be. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that he's got, he's got a lot of experience. So he's worked with suicide squad. He's worked with the Russo brothers with infinity war and end game and Avengers. Uh, he's got a lot of stuff on his IMDB. So he's got a, a lot of experience. Um, and that's just with stunt work. I'm not even talking about what he has done as uh, like a unit director. I can look that up real quick. Um, he has seven credits as a director, um, including extraction. And then there is, I'm trying to see if I know any of these. These are all shorts except for extraction. So yeah. Yeah, also coupled with that uh, rumor is the fact that there's a, po- a report that Dean Cundy, who's a legendary cinematographer who's worked on films like Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, worked on the book of Boba Fett as well. So that's exciting because I remember when they announced all the people that were going to be working on Rogue One, I think people got excited. And of course, Rogue One turned out great. Um, it had its issues behind the scenes, but I mean, the final product was was just phenomenal. So, yeah. He has that pedigree, and it's gonna. It feels like the book of Boba Fett is gonna be another level up from the Mandalorian with tie-ins from. We talked about this so much on the podcast, but tie-ins from The Empire Strikes Back and other stories we know. Maybe we get the Huts. Maybe we get uh, Cobb Vanth back. Timothy Oliphant, who was nominated for an Emmy, um, and possibilities for flashbacks too. I mean. How did he escape that Sarlacc? Oh. What happened? But you know what? Someone did bring up a pretty interesting theory. It's just a theory. It's not It's not what's being reported that's going to happen. But what if the Book of Boba Fett is Boba Fett in the Sarlacc pit the whole time? And what... <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous at the beginning here, but hear me out. So he's having flashbacks he like his life is flashing before his eyes in the okay. like okay. so the flashing before his eyes is what the actual series is and that's what we see so you're saying we experience all of the stuff that happened before he went into the star like right pit? right nothing after yes. that would be yes. interesting okay. i yeah. like like i mean i you're I, joining I, into a pretty weird uh theory of davis here well, it's I, not my kinda... theory. It's a theory I heard online. Okay. He so... says that the book of Boba Fett takes place at the be- at the beginning of the show. It's him and his Sarlacc pit, and he and his his life is flashing before his eyes. The end of this season is again him and the Sarlacc pit getting out. I don't know. Well, no, I mean it could be halfway through the season that they show him get out, and then we catch up to the end of the Mandalorian season two, where he's taking the throne at Jabba's mm-hmm. palace, and then we kind of continue from there. Then, of course, we get the the reintroduction of Cobb Vanth and the whole kind of underworld aspect of, of what we all kind of assumed that Book of Boba Fett's going to be. So You think episode one, he'll be in a starlight pit and it'll be him, his life flashing before his eyes? No, I don't necessarily think that. I'm just saying that's a pretty cool theory that I heard. What you Do you support that theory in, a, in any way or is it just something you're, you know, entertaining? It's just something I'm entertaining. I thought it was kind of cool because I, okay. I didn't even think of that. Just to have him in the pit the whole time, that would be kind of... Something unexpected that yeah. would be That'd totally be kind of would be very interesting. Yeah, playing against our expectations of what we were going to get. Um, but, but we definitely would get the answer to the question of how to get on Starlight Pit, which is a question we. I think have. we're going to get that answer in this series, yeah. and we'd be, I'd be upset if I didn't. And the fact that it's called the Book of Boba Fett, we're going to get every every episode is going to be a chapter, and of course, The Mandalorian already did that. But yeah, we're going to get chapter right. one, chapter two, and hopefully, it's. A lot of chapters. Hopefully, it's the multiple seasons too. That'd be that'd be awesome. So, do you think the um, chapter will carry over like into the Ahsoka show and whenever the Rangers of the New Republic will come out? Yeah, there's supposed to be overlap because I think Kathleen Kennedy mentioned that. Oh well, well, well I, no, I mean I'm not talking about like the crossovers. I'm talking about like not episodes, but them being chapters. So, so I mean, so essentially, like the yeah. Mandalorian is a book. The Book of Boba Fett is a book. Ahsoka yeah. Tano is a book. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. They could keep that theme going. But uh yeah, it's uh it, it's I think December's coming quick. I mean it's already August, so 
We're more than halfway there. To the book of Boba place. Fett. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yay. One step closer. So, Colin, did you have details on D23? Um, we, I, I mean, I mean, we kind of oh, talked uh, about it, but, uh, uh, and probably talked about it in the past already, but they are definitely going to show stuff from the actual shows, actual footage, possibly even trailers. Uh, and, yeah. and it's not just Star Wars stuff. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's everything. It's going to be, you know, you know, Marvel and all that stuff. So we'll yeah. definitely see stuff for Kenobi. Um, like like small glimpses probably not a trailer if we, if we got a trailer i would be very surprised I, I mean i would be very happy um but i think that uh i think that the whole thing is going to be a mini star celebration again kind of like that investors meeting that happened last year i remember david and i were watching the live stream like for the for a couple <laughs> of hours and they were just non-stop dropping amazing project names and we were just flipping out the entire time <laughs> oh it was so cool so you yeah. know who knows we uh might get new star wars projects that haven't even been announced yet like who who knows like the um yeah. but i'm kind of fearful because of covid because of because of uh at disney now you do have um ask indoors and stuff and well, I mean, they still might have the uh, D23. They might just not have an audience, and they can still kind of record well, something. Oh, that would be I would feel away. bad because all those people bought tickets. So, but again, it's, it's already exactly a very exclusive thing. So, yeah, I mean, they could just limit their audience more. Well, right, but then, but then we can't see stuff. <laughs> We're not that exclusive, I guess. Well, there you go. <laughs> Watched all right, yeah. Last year, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I uh, I was over at one of the shops, and one of the um cast members over there uh w was like, Oh, so who's your favorite character? And I was like, Oh, it's it's Max Rebo. And I think the biggest um, <laughs> worst um, question about your store is that you guys don't have enough Max Rebo merch. And and she's like, Well, there's I'm trying to think where Max Rebo is, and I just pointed towards the sail barge, and I was like, Yep, he's right there. You need more of that in the store. It's lacking, and and that's my only problem with Galaxy's Edge. And she was like, "Well, we'll we'll work on it." I'm like, "No, you won't." Nope. She's gonna go to lunch <laughs> and say, "Screw that guy." <laughs> <laughs> Who the heck is Max Rebo? Yeah, no. Uh, um, uh, one of the other cast members, like, I, I I was I was talking about Max Rebo, and one of the cast members was like, "Who's uh, who's Max Rebo?" And then oh, no. the other guy behind me, that was just like. He's one of the greatest musicians in Star Wars of all time. How do you not know this? I'm like, thank you, random person, for backing me up. I appreciate that. What what that person said? And he's like, well, I had no idea. And I was like, well, <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah. Yeah, you're educating someone every day. Oh, yeah. You should go play exactly. some rock with some random stranger. I am tempted to money. bring. I'm tempted to bring not money, but I'm tempted to bring Sabak the the next time I go, and um because of there's been like a bunch of open areas like open tables I noticed today, and I was like, you know what, it'd be really cool just to sit down and play Sabak and see who wants to come and play. So yeah. you'd have to be there with it, like at least one other person, so you're not playing by yourself. No, well, yeah. Well, I mean, I you can't trees. do that because it's it's not like solitaire. <laughs> Da, 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 da. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, is there any other Star Wars news? Any other Star Wars stuff? Uh, I could talk all day about Star Wars stuff, but no more news. Yeah, um, no more news. No, we were we were just talking about our good friend uh, Sam Hargrave and his uh, directing work, potent or his directing work in uh, Book of Boba Fett. But that was pretty much the last thing. <clears throat> yep, two more episodes till. The finale of the Bad Batch. And... It's gonna be so good. I, I mean, I'm really curious of what's well, gonna happen, um, because I'm curious if it's gonna be like a Rogue One death. situation where, yeah, who's gonna die? That's a big question. Right. We Some could have a Deadpool. Pool. <laughs> 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 Captain Deadpool. Nah, just Deadpool. Um, but yeah, there you go. Star Stuff Podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like you ended it with a Deadpool a little ringtone yeah. that was cool 
Da 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 da. There, I fixed it. Yeah, follow us on Instagram. Yeah. Yes. Star Stuff Podcast. We're also on Twitter. It's at Stuff Pod. We're on TikTok. I see. I get a lot of notifications saying people have followed us or liked our stuff. There you go. And I'm the one who started it all. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, God. okay. And also Everyone, Facebook. We have a page. Bro, we have a group. You, can you tap his back for me real quick? <laughs> Pat him on the back. There we go. Thank you. I oh, there we go. All right. Facebook, Star Wars Stuff Podcast Group, and the Star Wars Stuff Podcast page. And, of course, on Patreon, I'm going to release a whole lot of stuff today. We got a couple of our stories. I might record a new one. Uh, Rogue hopefully Rumors, hopefully, with Colin at some point this week. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you can email us at Star Wars Stuff Podcast at Gmail. Yes. And we also still have our audibletrial.com forward slash stuff podcast if you want to join Audible. Go listen to some Star Wars books, guys. Come on. Yeah. There's the, some great, amazing stuff out there. And I, I it's mean, not just and, movies and, and TV to shows. To be honest, I would, if, if you're planning to go to Galaxy's Edge, I would highly recommend checking out some of the books that are based off Galaxy's Edge. Um, yeah, of those books really tie couple, in, right? Yeah. Those like books tie in directly into the land, and it's so magical. It's audible it, it's, it, it's done so well. So I highly recommend reading those. Yeah. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash stuff podcast to get that uh, free book if yeah. you're listening. And also, <clears throat> even if you don't listen to us on Apple Podcasts, go to Apple, Apple Podcasts, write a review, give us five stars. It helps out the podcast a lot. It does. If you don't have an iPhone, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think technically you can still get to Apple Podcasts. So. I think it is an app you can get in the Google Play Store, yeah. There's Universal, but no. And of course, yeah. if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you. But we are also on YouTube. For everyone listening, a like and subscribe. We've got see our faces. Yeah, definitely. You can see all the pictures that I put up on screen. And uh, Boom. yeah. Pickers. We and talk about it. them all the time. Yeah. For Brooke, Matt, Colin, my name's David. May the force be with you. Always. Always.